We want this thing to end. We don't want a lot of people getting infected. We want it to end and end as quickly as possible. Uh, so far, I think we've done a fantastic job. I, I really think that the people behind me have not been given the credit that they deserve. As President Trump in the last hour uh, talking about his administration's work to fight the coronavirus, had a news conference in the White House. It, this, of course, comes after the administration and lawmakers struck a late night deal last night. A new measures to curb the pandemic, including free testing and paid leave programs. The White House also adding restrictions within its own walls, saying temperature checks will be conducted for those who are in close contact with both the president and the vice president. That, out of an abundance of caution, President Trump saying yes, he has tested for the coronavirus, but does not yet have the result. Though he says he's feeling fine. Jeff Mason joins us, White House reporter for Reuters, veteran of the White House. Jeff, were you over there? Uh, this afternoon, did you get tested? Uh, what have you heard from some of your colleagues? I was not there this afternoon. I was there yesterday uh, for the, the press conference in the Rose Garden. And today, I was in touch with my colleague who was there. And uh, they did temperature checks uh, for all the reporters who were in the briefing room with a, a thermometer uh, swap, basically, along the forehead. Uh, and then made clear that that wasn't just for journalists, but for anybody else who was going to be in close contact with, with Vice President Pence and with President Trump. That is a new measure, and I think it signals uh, an, a new seriousness with which this White House is taking the potential for this virus to spread, not only among the public, but there at the White House and there among the people with whom the president and his staff are interacting. And talk about that new seriousness also in terms of policy, in terms of uh, the bipartisan legislation that was passed last night, even though 40 Republicans did vote against it. Billions of dollars, billions to uh, try and fight the uh, pandemic and also to reassure Americans. Absolutely. And you, and you heard Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin at that um, White House briefing this afternoon saying that this is just the first step. So it, it also shows, as you rightly say, a, a sign of uh, the seriousness with which they are taking it in terms of policy, both Democrats and Republicans. This, of course, uh, was the result of negotiations between House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Steven Mnuchin, uh, I guess it sounds like most of the day yesterday and the last several days. Uh, and more to come. So they clearly are cognizant uh, now. It may have, some critics may say it took a little bit too long uh, of both the economic and the health impacts of this virus and are taking steps uh, now uh, at, a, at a time when hopefully they can reduce that curve that Dr. Anthony Fauci has been talking about in terms of the virus and the impact it yeah, can have. It if they don't reduce that curve, I mean, just before this happened, the CDC had these alarming numbers, 21 million hospitalized, yet we have uh, 925,000 beds, 160 to 214 million of us, 70% of Americans uh, possibly inf could be infected, 200,000 to 1.7 million deaths. This is all now aimed at trying to, as you say, flatten that curve. Uh, and we have something else that being flattened, and that's some of the uh, uh, divisiveness in Washington. Here's the vice president talking about the new bipartisanship. And I want to join President Trump uh, in thanking uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi, Leader McCarthy, the Republicans and Democrats in the House of Representatives, who, as the President said earlier today, pulled together, uh, pulled together to pass legislation uh, that's meeting this moment in the bipartisan, uh, health-first spirit that the American people would expect. Do you think something, this, this has caused something not a change in Washington? Well, it's a great question. I think time will tell. Uh, it, it certainly hasn't necessarily been that way the last few weeks. Uh, the president, when, when calling for bipartisanship, has also been very critical of uh, Vice President Biden, who may end up being his competitor in the general election, and, and, and former President Obama. Uh, and so we'll see if his, if his rhetoric changes. Uh, certainly, he talked today about habits changing. Uh, he got a little bit of criticism yesterday at that Rose Garden press conference for shaking hands with some of the CEOs who were there. Uh, and he was asked about that this afternoon. And he basically just said, look, it's a habit. Uh, but he agreed when he, when he was asked about it and said it's probably not a good idea to shake hands. And so whether those habits uh, apply just to that kind of interpersonal reaction, but also to uh, tweeting and, mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> attitudes, mm -hmm. yep. uh, not just from the White House, from Democrats as well, yep. uh, is something that we'll just have to watch in the, in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, no matter what uh, comes out of the mouth, we should start also doing the old elbow bumps or, you know, just going like this or maybe not even fist bumps. I don't know. What, I, don't, I guess no fist, no fist bumps? Okay. Arthel says no fist bumps.
Yeah, I think either elbow elbow bumps or just a nod uh, okay. seems to be the, the safest way going forward. We'll have that, and I will nod to you, Jeff Mason. And to you, sir. Even by satellite <laughs> in a different city. Uh, good to Thank see you, you. and, and stay you safe. Thanks.